In the ADC Life Support Training Schools, we show an actual parachute jump, demonstrated by professionals who are your instructors. These schools were established by ADC at Tyndall Air Force Base, Florida, and Perrin Air Force Base, Texas, in 1964. To provide the air crewmen with the confidence needed to follow correct procedures for their survival, every three years, crewmen from squadrons throughout the command must take a week's training at one of the schools. They come in all ages and ranks from general to airman. If this is their first time here, they have two things in common. The majority have never ejected from an aircraft, and most of them question their ability to handle the situation if it should occur. As instructors, our job is to help them overcome these doubts. We do it by teaching them all procedures involved in the ejection survival cycle and by having them practice until their performances become automatic. We do it by building up their confidence in themselves and in their equipment. We start them off with lectures on the physics of the atmosphere, how it affects individuals at altitude, and then follow up with a refresher course in the altitude chamber. Following the altitude chamber, their confidence is built up by indoor and outdoor demonstrations and practical applications of procedures. We minimize the fear of ejection by showing them the proper way to sit, head, spine, and hips in straight line, so that the thrust is evenly distributed along the spine, and no damage is done. We go into detail about their personal equipment and the advisability of checking it out before every mission, of knowing the contents of the medical kits and what they can do for an injured airman, how to effectively operate their radios and beacons and other signaling devices such as the Mark 13 day-night flare, the pen gun, the strobe. Both can be seen at considerable distance on a clear night. The mirror, which has more rescues to its credit than any other signaling device. But mostly, we work outdoors, teaching them skills which will save broken bones or lives. We show them how to make parachute landing falls, how to approach the ground with head level, eyes on the horizon, arms folded, feet and legs together, knees bent but under control. The balls of the feet should strike first. The chin is tucked into the chest. The fall is initiated. The meaty parts of the body absorbing the shock. Here's the way it looks in slow motion. Chin is tucked in. Balls of feet touch ground. Calf touches ground. Then the thigh, the rump, and the back. The crewmen practice the falls, first from ground level, then from the jump platform. They practice parachute landing falls to the right, to the left, forward, and backward. They practice until they achieve a high degree of proficiency. Then they proceed to swing harness training where they practice parachute landing falls under more realistic conditions. Unlike the jump stand, where the crewman controls the moment of release, we control the swing harness. This adds an element of surprise. Release can be on the first, second, third, or any swing. Now let's look at this in slow motion. Next, to prepare them to cope with parachute drag, we schedule a session with the wind drag machine. Let's play it back in slow motion. Watch how he rolls his hands down and up to the risers so he'll be able to release the chute. Then brings one leg up and kicks over on his back, which affords him more protection than on his stomach. How he spreads his legs to keep his body from rolling. And pulls down safety covers and releases canopy. 
Finally, we make them familiar with their personnel lowering device, a nylon escape rope that will get them to the ground if their canopy hangs on a tree. Descent is controlled by a friction brake, operated by the parachutist. In releasing the risers, we have them avert their heads to avoid a backlash. By letting the line play through the hand, they complete the descent safely. By the third day, the class is ready for the procedures they will use immediately after ejection and during descent. Our teaching method is simple. We have them repeat aloud while simulating each procedure. Then they continue to repeat them until they are so ingrained they will perform them automatically, even while in shock. Activate survival kit. Inflate LPU. Make four line cut. They practice the procedures again after ejections from the jump tower. Check canopy. Raise visor. Remove oxygen mask. Activate survival kit. Inflate LPU. Make four line cut. Hook life preserver in front. Survey terrain. They learn about water landings. Never release the canopy until the feet touch the water. Close canopy release safety covers. Turn to face the canopy and paddle away using the arms only. They learn rafting procedures, how to get aboard any type of raft. They learn to get free of a canopy if it should fall on them during a water landing. They learn to release the canopy in a drag situation on water as well as on land. When the day is over, they are ready for the major event of the course, parasailing. For many, parasailing is a sport. But at the ADC Life Support Training Schools, it is serious business, a meticulously organized and executed operation where nothing is left to chance. It is the final test for the air crewman before he graduates. For him, it carries the ejection to rescue cycle to the ultimate stage, short of actual ejection from an aircraft. Once launching starts, a student will be airborne about once every three minutes, with each student making three flights. We tell the crewman what is expected of him, the procedures he will follow, and the signals he will use. Offshore, support boats move into position. The tow boat, the boat that will pick up the parasailer, the boat that will pick up the canopy. In moments, launch preparations are completed. Launch team ready? Boat one is ready. Boat two, ready. Boat three, ready. Team ready? Tension, tension, tension. Launch, launch. Launch. With the wind in his face, he takes off. The rate of climb is fairly rapid at the start, but decreases slowly as height is gained. Depending on wind and length of tow line, altitude ranges from 250 to 600 feet. At altitude, the parasailer watches the tow boat for a signal, alerting him to prepare for release. When the signal is given, the parasailer acknowledges and activates the release. On his way down, we grade his performance as he goes through the procedures he practiced during the last few days. Ejection is a hazardous experience. Before the ADC life support training schools were established, one out of three crewmen was either seriously injured or killed. Now 97% of all ejections involving ADC air crews are successful. The primary factor in this success is the confidence gained by the graduates of these schools. Let's return to the F-106 pilot. 
He has the confidence in his ability to make the split-second decision that will save his life. He has mastered the required procedures so he could perform them automatically even if he was in shock. Learn your procedures and learn them well. This could be you.